Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this little series I'm putting together, I'm explaining how we can use IMFD to rendezvous with the ISS. Once again, I want to give a big thanks to Dimitri for showing me how to do this. Let's go ahead and switch camera views and jump right back into it. Let me unpause. So in the last video, we completed our uh, the burn that we needed to do to uh, send ourselves uh, to match time with the International Space Station. And now we're getting really close to the point where we need to do our intercept burn so we can match velocities with the ISS once we get there. Uh, we've, we know that our difference in velocity, our intercept velocity is only going to be a few meters per second. So we put that number into burn time calculator. And according to burn time calculator, as long as we do the, uh, the burn within 45.207 meters of the ISS, we won't hit it but we don't want to get in that close because that's the dead center of the ISS and there are solar panels and other stuff around it. So just realistically, we would want to begin the burn when we're, you know, at least, you know, 500 meters away, somewhere between like 500 meters and a kilometer. Or, you know, if you want to be even more careful, begin the burn at two or three kilometers, but you know, we'll, we'll get in pretty close. So now we know that we just need to be about, you know, 45 meters so that gives us a number to go by so let's go ahead and bring back up our docking um, mfd so we know how far away we are and i'm going to go ahead and put that information up on the hud i just like to have this information up here because it gives me a better sense of what's happening than just um than than otherwise not having it so again we're 186 uh, kilometers out so let's warp time four getting closer and once we get, let's say, 75 kilometers, so about here, we're close enough, we're going to go ahead and start getting the vessel oriented for, uh, for this maneuver. And we know that we're going to be, we need to be facing the uh, negative velocity vector of the ISS. So let's go to rotation, rotation, and let's just put in some rotation. We don't, we don't need a ton, but maybe two clicks. And we're just going to start rotating the vessel until we find that negative velo velocity vector. And we can also tell because that uh, crosshair needs to be in the center. So those are two things that we can go by. So we're, we're looking for that and we're looking for that to be in the middle. So we're getting pretty close. I'm going to kill rotate. And now we're 64 uh, kilometers out. So let's get in a bit closer. We eventually, you know what I'm going to do for this one? Um, instead of manually lining this up, because I did that last time, I, the only thing is for this program, I don't know if auto burn will automatically line it up. It does on the other program. I'm honestly not sure if it does on this one, so let's be safe. And let's go ahead and line up manually. On the other program, when you click auto burn, when you bring up the burn vector and click auto burn, it will do the alignment for you. I'm not 100% sure if it will on this one, to be honest. Let me actually do a quick test. Yeah, it will. Okay. Yeah, because it's starting to align. Okay, I just I wasn't sure on that. Now I'm sure. So rather than lining up manually, I just want to show that, you know, if we're way off and we don't want to take the time to uh, to get lined up. So let's say, you know, we're something like that. And, you know, we're lazy and we're not worried about, you know, being hyper efficient with Delta V. What we can do is just uh, warp time forward till we're reasonably close. You know, let's say 20 kilometers. Like that. And then we can press auto burn carefully. If we press auto burn and, and we let it get all the way lined up, it's going to complete the burn. So what we'll do is we'll press AB and we'll let... We'll let IMFD do the work of getting us lined up, but right before it gets uh, centered up, we turn off auto burn. And the reason I did that is so that it doesn't actually carry out the burn because we're not ready to carry out the burn yet. We're still 18 kilometers out. So essentially what I did was once that cross got in the middle of that part, I clicked AB again to turn it off. So we're just letting it do the work of finding the alignment for us or finding most of it. So now let's go ahead and warp time forward. And again, we're going to get really close. Maybe when we're down to say 
Here, we're going to do auto burn again, just to let it line up and then turn it off. And now we'll take care of the rest of the, uh, we'll take care of everything else when we're really close to the time that we want to do the burn. And I'm going to say, 3,000. I'm going to say when, when we break 800 uh, meters, I'm going to click auto burn and I'm just going to let it do it. It'll, it'll line it up, then it'll do the burn. So let's just give it a moment here, a little warp time forward, go through faster. So 800 meters, we will click 1, AB. And now when it lines up, it carries out the burn. And it will match our velocity so that we are now essentially parked next to the next to the ISS. So let's go ahead and rotate around and see our target. And there we are. Okay, so we've arrived, and that is effectively, you know, the end. That's how you use IMFD to uh, to rendezvous with the ISS. Now, from this point, we we just do what we would norm. We can't. We would just do what we would normally do as far as you know, translating over and going about our dock. There's one more bonus I have in store here, though. Take a sip of water. And this has nothing to do with IMFD. I recently found out about an MFD called Pursuit MFD. I don't know that I had ever heard about it back in Orbiter 2010. I don't know if it existed back then or not. But I've heard about it a few times recently. And uh, Dimitri brought it to my attention and showed me how to use it. And this thing is so cool. This is so cool. So since we have time left in this video, I want to demonstrate how to dock with the ISS using a method that is virtually automatic magic. It's really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this side off. And I'm going to bring up uh, Pursuit MFD on this side comes up looking like this and what we want to do is we want to dock so if you look at these you can probably guess which one we want DOC so currently we have an invalid target so we're gonna click uh, target ISS so step one dock step two target step three we have to choose the local docking port our vessel the XR2 only has one docking port so the local dock is one it's correct but if you had multiple to choose from, you would uh, click LDK for local dock and put in the dock number that for, for your vessel. And again, the XR2 only has one, so we just put in one. And then we want target dock. And then the, uh, the International Space Station has five, so we just pick one. Let's go with four. I don't know. So we, uh, we put in uh, the fourth uh, docking port. And now what we want to do is I want to instruct uh, Pursuit MFD to go over and get lined up with that docking port. So I'm, I'm going to do that by programming in a distance. And the distance that I'm going to put in is uh, zero for the X. So you know when we're using um, uh, dock MFD, you got that red X in the middle. And you know when we're trying to line it up left to right, the uh, the X left to right, that's kind of like what this first number is. I'm putting in a zero because I want that to be centered left to right. And then you know how our X has to be centered up and down? My next number is my Y, and I'm going to put in zero. So I want a zero left and right, and I want a zero up and down. The last number is how close do I want to be to the docking port. For the sake of, uh, uh, for the sake of docking, you know, it makes sense to be, you know, maybe somewhere between... 75 and maybe three to 400 meters out so you just kind of pick whatever you think makes sense based on where we are at the moment i can probably get in pretty close but let's just say 100 meters to be maybe on the safe side so 0x 0y 100z or z as some countries like to say so with those numbers programmed in and i don't know exactly what p stands for i just think it makes sense to me that it's p so I have programmed in my X is 0, I have programmed in my Y is 0, I have programmed in my Z is 100. 
now I'm actually going to press the NOR button to get rid of this kill, roll, no roll. And now I'm going to press APD. Don't know what it stands for. Automatic programming. I don't know. But when I press this, it just does it. It's amazing. So this uh, MFD is going to take us over to the docking port Seven. so we are straight in front of it but we're going to be a hundred meters out in front of it but we will be perfectly lined up and it's so amazing that if I go to the external view let me zoom out a little bit so I can figure out where I'm at there we are so with completely hands off um, I can do time warp 10 time warp seems a bit aggressive for this MFD so I'm going to press control F2 and we're going to do it at four. I'm just going to lean back and let it do it because I think it's cool. <laughs> I don't recommend this as a replacement for learning how to dock manually. I, I just think that this is a good, uh, a good tool to use for realism. Uh, once you understand the mechanics and everything, once you've done, you know, lots and lots of docks, and I've done how many dozens and dozens and tons, dozens of docking, so I get it. There's really nothing more I'm going to learn by doing more and more manual docks. And it, and, and as we've talked about in so many videos, in spaceflight, it's not terribly realistic to do all these things manually. It's good to know how to do it, but realistically mostly things get programmed in and executed. So let's look back inside the XR2. And so the way I think of these numbers here, again, I think of P as program and I think of R as real. So I programmed in zero, but my real X currently is 34. I programmed in a zero Y, but my real Y at the moment is zero, zero, two, effectively zero. I programmed in 100, my real Z is 100. And uh, we're getting really close. So you can see we're almost... Now, some of these... I, I wouldn't worry if you see, like, uh, the final decimal point isn't exactly zero. I wouldn't worry about it. Because... So that's uh, meters. Centimeters, I think. Uh, so what would this be? Like, millimeters or something? The point is, these last numbers are so small. There's no point in worrying about them. So... Uh, Pursuit MFD has carried out this instruction. It is it has taken us so that we are now perfectly in line with this docking port, and we're 100 meters out. So now I'm going to give it a new instruction. I'm going to say distance. I don't want my X or Y to change, so I'm going to leave those at zero. But now I want to dock. I can I can put in zero, and that will probably work. But the way I think of docking is like. When I, when I come up to that, uh, let me switch just for a second here. When I come up to that docking port, if I'm at zero, I kind of think of it as like this, like I'm just saying, touch it. But docking, I kind of think works more like this. Like I want to touch and have just a bit of, uh, you know, I want to, you know, put that docking system slightly inside the catch. So instead of, so instead of putting a zero, on the last bit of distance, I'm going to go zero, zero, and then negative, something like that. I mean, you could you could do something really small, like five centimeters, but we'll say you know ten centimeters, and then we'll hit enter, and it's just going to do it. Warning: nose cone is closed. And it's a good thing I got that warning. warning. Nose cone is closed. So I'm gonna press Control A. Warning. Nose cone is closed. I get it. I get it. Warning. I get it. Nose cone is closed. Once the APU is running. Warning. Control K to open the nose cone. I, I should have remembered to do that when I went to the 100 meter mark. I, I meant to do that. I just forgot because I got talking about the docking. Oh yeah, let me switch camera views. So just waiting for that animation to finish. There it's finished. Press Control A to turn the APU back off. And, and yeah, this is just going to do it all. We don't have to do anything. So you know, if you're trying to do something cinematically, this would be a really cool tool to use so that you would have a perfect dock for your playback or your recording or whatever. 40. And again, we can do time warp. If I press Control F2, 
and I just do say you know three or four. I don't think I don't think ten works very well with this yeah. MFD. It seems to bobble too much, but uh, three or four seems to work really 20, well. 15, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, oh, four, something else. Four, Let me go back to real time. You may be wondering three, how fast is it going to dock. If we bring the dock back up, you'll notice when we get to when we get right up to it, it really starts slowing things down. The actual dock is extremely delicate. It's way more delicate than I usually do manually. And I try to do my dockings quite manually or quite delicately manually, but you can see this is just just barely sliding in there. And now our distance is 0 0.05, 0 0.04, 0 0.03. Contact. Done. And that's a docking complete. Ship is docked. So that's it. Let's go ahead and uh, look outside, check out our dock, and switch camera views. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, big, big thanks to Dimitri. He's been so helpful since I've been coming back to uh, Orbiter these last few weeks, answering questions, helping me out. And I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing a little demonstration on how to use IMFD for docking with the ISS and a little bonus here at the end using Pursuit MFD to automate the actual docking process, which I think is amazing. So that's going to wrap it up for this little series. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next video.